Hey guys, so you might remember this micro from a few videos back where I uh, um, replaced the fuses, ended up rebuilding it, got new buttons for it, mostly because I was missing parts. I'm still missing a battery cover, but that's besides the point. Uh, it does work perfectly fine. And, you know, again, I, I digress. Uh, what I actually want to show you is something that I got in the mail today. Uh, of course, um, a better title for this video would be Mac Mako Buys More broken shit on J4U, but I found this micro, and uh, when it was listed, it was like 90 or 98, maybe even over 100, and I kept my eyes on it for a while, and um, eventually J4U sent out an email blast with this thing right at the top, and I decided, hey, maybe it's probably time to pick it up if I want to get it. I ended up paying a little bit over 60. You can see there, price is at $60.67, but anyway... Says the item does not work. We checked this item, just couldn't power it on. We were unable to confirm the details. Uh, if you want to take a look at some better pictures, you can search on their site KA6972 and you can check it out for yourself. But that's not that important here because look what I got. I got a package from Japan. And in here, since I really don't order that much from Japan, should be my micro. I want to see if I can get this thing going, see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. Um, my first guess, honestly, is either it literally just needs to be charged or that the battery itself is bad. If that's not the case though, that's why I've got this on my desk. So I can do a little bit more troubleshooting with working micro parts. I got a few things here. Of course, I didn't think they would be on top, but well, come to this stuff later, or probably actually, I don't think this will make it into a video because they both work perfectly fine. Um, I just want them from a personal collection. One more thing in here. Yep, there it is. Couldn't help myself. It was a dollar. Okay. So this is the micro. For those that aren't aware, this is the special Famicom. Japan edition. Of course, they did release one in, uh, let's see, KA6972. They did release a Famicom version in the United States, but it didn't have uh, had a different logo on the back, if I recall correctly. Uh, either way, here it is. Before we even get into that, I needed a game because I don't have any actual GBA games within reach here, and I don't really want to show off my cart cart. Nope, this cart doesn't work, so I might have to. There's a cart in my GBA here. Oh, well, screw it. My test cart, but this should work just fine. So this thing, let's try it off first and foremost. Nothing. No blinking lights, nothing. So let's try charging it out. I've got a cable here that's plugged into a battery bank. When charging normally, you should see these blue lights on the bottom here. And of course, these ones are a lot brighter because this has transparent buttons, but whatever. So they come on for a second, then go off. So that means there's either a bad fuse or the battery itself is bad. Yeah, it's not going to come on. So let's tear it apart and see what's going on. <clears throat> battery looks physically fine not bulging or anything. The uh, water damage sticker is still intact. And, ta-da! 
That's not all the troubleshooting we need to do though. Um, next we need to figure out if this battery is bad by trying to charge this one. Oh, so that charge is just fine. So that, that was a <laughs> that was a quick and easy video. Do I have sound? Yep. And what do you know? Works just fine, doesn't fail the test, which is good. I hear sound. It's quiet, but micros usually are. Ooh, let me uh, restart this here. If you're using this AGS test cart and you hold L and R on boot, it brings you to the menu instead of the uh, auto test. But we can do LCD unit checker. And I can see, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, probably not at all, uh, but it is flickering a little bit, so it needs to be calibrated. Luckily, that's super easy on a micro. Just got to pop the faceplate off. which is stuck down. Ooh, I need some cleaning. But otherwise, there's a potentiometer right up here. You just spin that till the flicker goes away. And the screwdriver does not fit. <laughs> Use this one, maybe. There we go. See, I just made it a lot worse. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but just as an example, if you can see that. There we go. Looks good to me. There we go. Now, I guess the only thing left to do physically is just clean it. I mean, that was a... Uh... To be honest, that was a short, disappointing video. I mean, not that getting a perfectly working micro for 60 bucks is uh, disappointing, but I don't know. I, I like working for it sometimes. Yeah, this battery's doing nothing. Might be able to bring it back, but I'll probably just buy a new one. It's safer. For reference, the battery is at 0.32 volts. That is super bad. Lithium batteries should never go below 2.5 volts. That is usually a death sentence for him. So yeah, this thing just needs a battery. Well, there you have it. That's how you, <laughs> that's how you fix a, a, a Game Boy Micro with uh, no power. Um, screw it, while we're here, let's see if we can get this game working. It's a, uh, I'm just wiping it off with my shirt. Wiping off the contacts. It's a Mega Man game, or I guess technically Rock Man, as it's called in Japan. I just wanted it for the cool color cart. Contacts are super dirty. <clears throat> Okie doke. So, when all else fails, we need <clears throat> some isopropyl alcohol and cotton swab.
And I need to do this to the Game Boy itself. Not necessarily the cart slot, but like this. Looks like someone spilled something on it. Which I'm grateful it didn't go inside, but it's still super gross. Okay. Ta da! Well. <laughs> okay. was not exactly how I expected this video to go. Quite frankly, I expected it to be a lot longer. But, um... Well, there you go, I guess. Thanks for joining me, guys. Have a good night. Yes. Yes, hello. Okay, so it's just about to clean up for the day. Just finish up, take a break, etc., etc. Um, and I was looking around at projects on my desk, and I had a pretty dumb idea. So in my last video with the Famicom Micro, I checked this battery, and it was at like 0.3 volts or something. And yeah, I need to order another battery, but you know, let's see what we can do in the meantime, yeah? So, if you have a battery at home, one of your consoles that's dead, the best thing that you should do, and I don't recommend doing anything other than doing this, take that battery to an electronics recycling facility, give it to them. Don't do anything else with it. Don't don't take it apart, don't fuck around with it, don't try and revive it, just give it to them. It's not worth it. These things can explode if you fuck around with them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just not worth it, you know? It's your health and safety, it's not... It's not just, oh, well, it'll kill my Game Boy. No, it could explode in your pocket and burn you. Or even leave it at home leave it on your desk, it explodes because it's fucking done, and uh, burns your house down. That sounds like a fun time to be had by all. Don't do it, just get rid of the battery. I am going to get rid of this battery, I'm going to recycle it. But before I do that, I want to take it apart. Don't take apart batteries, taking apart batteries is dumb. Oh, man. I didn't mean to peel that off. Okay. There we go. So, the reason I wanted to do this, and I'm going to try to not work with any metal tools. Because I want this connector. I'm still going to recycle this thing. Just... just uh, need something from it first. And I want to get as much wire as I could. So this thing now, I'm going to insulate it and uh, bring it to Best Buy or whatever, next chance I get, because they take batteries for recycle. Favorite method of insulation. Cheap, easy, and removable, and whoever actually gets those recycled batteries from Best Buy, if you hate that me and other people do this, let me know. I'll stop doing it. But until then, I'm going to keep doing it, because it's easy. Okay, so I found this on my shelf. This is a 380 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. 
same chemistry as the original. Well, technically not, but close enough that it won't make a difference. The original is a 460 milliamp hour battery, uh, but I think we're going to be okay because the original didn't work at all. Oh, there we go. Only problem is I soldered on a different connector, and that connector is not going to work here. smarter thing to do would be to take this apart and then I can wire this directly up to the protection circuit in this battery, but I'm not going to do that because this thing is really, really securely packaged. I forgot to turn my iron on again. This is a Hobby RC battery. I'm guessing it's for either like a little drone, quadcopter or something, or controller, transmitter. I have a super tiny heat shrink. I'm going to cut off a couple pieces now while my soldering iron's heating up. Because, you know, you got to install the heat shrink beforehand. Oh, that's convenient. The wires are... Oh, wait, never mind. It's opposite of what I want. Well, let's fix that. That's why I wanted as much wire as I could get. Now this is not the proper method for splicing wires. The proper method is to strip off a whole bunch more. The hell? It says it's up to temperature. There it goes. Proper method is to splice off all, or yeah reveal a whole bunch more wire that way you can actually tie these together I believe what it uh, the proper terminology it's called like a lineman splice or something and that's how you want to do it but that's not how I'm gonna do it because I'm not a very wise man. No, um, this won't be as strong mechanically, but on a battery that is completely internal, it should not make any difference whatsoever. of being heat shrink. Oh, well, that's completely out. Well, oh, shit. Okay. I'll use the heat gun. the improper way to install a new battery in your Game Boy Micro. And uh, just for verification, see that works just fine on the original. That is taped in. Pop that bad boy in there. Should not use a metal tool to insert this because the uh, contacts are slightly uh, exposed. There, 
and that'll fit in there. I don't want to dump that out to show you, but it'll fit. It's flush. It's smaller than the original. Boots up just fine. And charges just fine. So there we go. Now I have a now I have a new battery for my micro while I wait for a uh, official, not official, but properly sized replacement. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.